Hello, and welcome to a very special session on travel and advertising trends in the Americas. I'm Olivier Ponti, VP for Insights at Forward Keys, the travel analytics company. I'll be guiding you through the Americas, top to bottom, with the freshest air ticketing data, and hopefully leaving you inspired that recovery in this part of the world is showing some promise. With me in the studio direct from London, we have Ben Mill, the Managing Director of PSI Out of Home Advertising, the world's leading media agency for the travel sector. With volatility the new normal, what does that mean for businesses dependent on travelers? Well, according to Ben, it's all about adapting, understanding this new touchless society and using data to tap into all the new advertising touch points beyond programmatic. It's time to put on your creative hats and brace yourself as we reveal who the new key players in travel are. Are you ready? But first, here's a little about Forward Keys. Founded in 2010, we've pioneered the way forward for tourism organizations, hotels and retailers keen to understand who's traveling where, when and for how long. We've managed to share such information by having the most comprehensive ticketing data covering the globe from online booking to travel agencies and airlines. Equipped with historical data, future bookings and forecast planning for the future, even with a pandemic, can be simpler with daily updated data from yours truly, Forward Keys. Visit our website, subscribe to our newsletter, or email us at webinar at forwardkeys.com to learn more. For today's analysis on the travel prospects for the Americas, we've used three key datasets, seat capacity, actual air tickets, and forward-looking actual air tickets. That means we look at trends from the supply and demand sites while looking at the moving timeframes. Let's start by looking at domestic and regional travel in the Americas, as these two segments are the ones that have experienced the highest level of reactivation. On this chart, we're looking at two key countries where domestic travel has followed two opposite trends, the US in blue and Brazil in orange. While the US domestic travel is on a steady course upward since the beginning of the year, Reaching 66% of 2019 levels, Brazil, on the other hand, is showing signs of rapidly slowing down. Figures have dropped to only 27% of the pre-COVID levels. The vaccination rollout in the US is going at a good pace, and on the 2nd of March, President Joe Biden announced that the US will have enough coronavirus shots for every adult by May more and more people are starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And this is a positive sign for the travel industry. Also, the spring break 2021 is an important driver for future bookings, driving a fresh increase in US domestic demand. Over in Brazil, we're seeing a drop in travel demand, a situation naturally linked to the evolution of the pandemic as cases increase there. While domestic U.S. travel is indicating signs of a revival, international travel is still only at 47% of 2019 levels. However, baby steps are being made to improve outbound travel, mainly due to its regional neighbor open to U.S. travelers, as intercontinental travel has not rebounded yet. Okay, let's see what's happening in South America. International inbound travel in South America from outside the region is performing better than from within the region, although in both cases in very low volumes when compared to 2019 levels. We're witnessing a worsening situation in origin cities and destinations. To mention Brazil again, as we are recording this video, it has recorded its worst number of daily COVID-19 cases, and this has pushed ticketing levels for travels out of Brazil to other South American destinations to minimum levels. By this, 
we mean more than 90% less than in 2019. International inbound tourism for Argentina, Chile and Peru is tracking 85% behind 2019 levels on average. Now, let's zoom in a bit and look at the breakdown of tickets for inbound travel in South America from international market inside and outside the region. Tickets for international travel within the region only account for 15% of 2019 levels. If we include domestic travel, the percentage goes up to 44%. Domestic travel is therefore playing a key role in keeping the travel sector afloat. If we look at how travel from outside the region is performing, we can see that the US travel market makes or breaks destinations in South America. While intercontinental travel remains minimal at 18% of 2019 levels, travel from the US to the region is at 36% of pre-pandemic levels. Just a word about Canada in case you're wondering, unfortunately, there isn't much to say from the source market at the moment, as bookings from Canada have virtually come to a halt due to the current strict travel restrictions in place. As you can see, uh, our travel data demonstrates just how much the destinations south of the US border depend on the number of US travelers flying. So let's focus on the USA now. Regional travel from the US was reactivated in 2020 thanks to travel demand to nearby Mexico and other open for business Caribbean destinations. Looking at future international travel from the US from March till May, three Mexican cities are among the top 10 most popular destinations, Cancun, San Jose de Cabo and Puerto Vallarta. Tickets to Cancun represent around 17% of all tickets to international destinations for the next three months, a significant increase compared to its 2019 level of around 6%. On this table, you can see the strong progression of St. Thomas in the US Virgin Islands, where bookings are currently around 60% ahead compared with 2019. The US Virgin Islands have been benefiting since last year from their easy connections with the US and their open for business status. Let's have a closer look at San Juan de Puerto Rico, which registers a 10% growth for the next three months. Puerto Rico is growing in its popularity and its results have been recently boosted by a new competitive advantage. Since January 26, US travelers going back home need to present a negative COVID-19 test, taken three days before their return flight. However, Puerto Rico is a US territory and as such, Visitors from the U.S. mainland do not need a negative coronavirus test before returning home. Bingo! Although the Center for Disease Control and Prevention recommends getting tested three to five days after arrival and staying home for seven days after a trip to Puerto Rico as a precaution measure, the fact that a negative test result is not compulsory puts Puerto Rico in a very good position as one of the most accessible travel destinations for Americans. This is another example of how any changes in the legislation related to travel restrictions or new requirements may affect travel flows and travel behaviors. Let's have a look at new trends regarding travel behaviors. And let's now see how travel behavior patterns have changed from pre and post COVID-19, still using travel from the US as an example. A notable change in behavior patterns is that the number of last minute bookings has soared. We can see this very clearly illustrated in this chart, which compares the lead time for a trip from the US to the Dominican Republic in 2019 and 2021. In 2019, for a trip to take place between March and May, 59% of US travelers booked their trip to the Dominican Republic at least two months or more in advance. In 2021, the situation has completely shifted as 
59% of trips have been booked less than two months before the departing date. Another trend worth mentioning is that while it is true that fewer people travel than in the past, it is also true that those who travel tend to stay significantly longer at their destination than before. For example, US travelers to the Dominican Republic. Travelers staying three or more weeks accounted for 9% of all trips in 2019, while in 2021 they account for 22% of trips. Shorter stays of five nights or less have dropped from a 46% market share in 2019 to 33% in 2021. One of the reasons why longer stays are relatively more popular now is that the visit to friend and relative segment is showing a higher degree of resilience than average. We can see an example of this phenomenon on this chart, which focuses on US travel to India and shows that the share of the VFR segment has increased quite significantly. It is telling that India currently ranks in fifth position for international travel from the US and first outside the American continent, a performance no doubt linked to the fact that Indians are the second largest immigrant group in the US after Mexicans. Now, let's take a look at the current stages for bookings over the next month, right down to airport level. Yes, forward keys data can even dissect traveler traffic even at the terminal level. In these tables, we're looking at the most resilient US airports for international travel, comparing 2021 with 2019. To be clear, we're looking at departing origin airports to travel internationally, so where the trip first originated for the international trip. And we're using two indicators, scheduled seat capacity in blue and confirmed tickets in orange. Looking at these top 10, we can see that both rankings pretty much are in line and that Charlotte and Dallas lead as the best performing airports. As leisure is currently driving demand in the US market, all US airlines are deploying capacity to leisure destinations. Airlines are deploying capacity from their hubs and focus city to the leisure market. Think of American Airlines increasing its capacity to and from Charlotte and Dallas as an example. Looking at top performing airports for domestic travel, scheduled seat capacity is very close to pre-pandemic levels, which is a positive sign. Leisure is also driving demand for domestic travel. The major destinations which are holding up the best are all holiday hotspots, and it is therefore no surprise to see that the top five destinations are all located in the sunshine state of Florida. Moving ahead and looking into the summer, all indicate that the situation should keep on improving. Departures from US airports, all travelers included, were 68% below 2019 levels during the last 12 months. For the next three months, departures are behind by only 33%, and they are behind by 29% when looking at the June to August period. There is this room for cautious optimism here, especially if the vaccination campaign in the US keeps progressing at its fast pace. Yes, we are starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I'd like to end this presentation on a high note with a busy US summer season. Before bringing Ben Milne from PSI Media to the stage, I'd like to remind you that if you'd like to keep informed of our latest research and stay ahead of the curve, you can sign up for our newsletter via our website www.forwardkeys.com. I'll now open the floor to Ben, who will tell us how PSI out-of-home advertising is adapting to the new normal and seizing the opportunities offered by new media consumption attitudes. He will also share some future trends for global travel media. Ben, thanks for joining us. The floor is yours. 
Thank you, Olivier, for the kind introduction and that incredible data and insight into the state of travel across the Americas. And I like to think that I share your cautious optimism as we go forwards. Um, before I go into detail on the areas that you just outlined, let me briefly introduce PSI. We're a global location-based marketing specialist and the centralized international out-of-home hub for Dentsu. We're responsible for out-of-home and airport media strategy, planning, investment, and activation across the globe. Our annualized investment into these channels makes us one of, if not the largest centralized purchaser for these increasingly important and growing channels. Now it's clear from the data that you've just shown that the way that people navigate the world underwent a monumental shift in 2020. We went from global to hyper-local within an incredibly short time frame. And over the last year, 93% of countries have imposed some form of mobility restrictions domestically and internationally. And of course, we've all been forced to adapt our businesses and our behaviors in order to navigate this greater level of uncertainty that has been brought about. Fortunately, the global travel sector is familiar with volatility from previous financial crisis, geopolitical tensions, natural disasters, and cross-border viral outbreaks. The sector has weathered it all, and it's always emerged better and stronger than before. Although this pandemic, being the first truly global disaster in the modern age, has brought with it unprecedented levels of challenge and underlined that volatility really is the new normal. So the only way for us to effectively address these monumental shifts in the patterns of movement and behavior is through better audience understanding, more agile planning, and more dynamic activation. And all of this is made possible through more relevant, more frequent, more reliable, and more actionable data intelligence. At PSI, we've continued to develop our global data infrastructure throughout the pandemic, leaning heavily on our partnerships with experts like Ford Keys, to ensure that we're able to help brands navigate the ongoing uncertainty with genuine audience intelligence and understanding of mobility patterns, ensuring that the best outcomes come from using the channel. Now, Dell Technologies are a major brand that we work with who, like many on today's call, have had to adapt their strategy in global travel in order to reflect their audience's new travel behaviors across North America and LATAM. Faced with a changed pattern of travel, we've used our access to real-time booking data to help Dell Technologies shift their media presence across key hubs that continue to perform for them against their core business audience, whilst cutting back on those that were not. In parallel, we use granular defined audience segment specific insights to recalculate the value being delivered by long-term placements in the new normal and ensured that this value was properly compensated and redistributed throughout the campaign lifetime. Key private jet operations across North America that were less impacted by the drop in passengers were prioritized for Dell during peak booking periods and supported by a mixture of high impact out of home sites and digital solutions across key airport hubs. This agile data informed real time planning allowed Dell Technologies travel media activations to remain effective throughout 2020, running across four key American hubs and a cluster of relevant private jet operations. But as I mentioned earlier, it isn't just mobility that has changed. Media behaviors have adapted as well. The travel experience is going touchless. Increased investment in digitization across the consumer journey have been driven in large part by consumer demand and the response to this from companies in the sector looking to rebuild passenger confidence. In a recent global travel sentiment survey, we found that 87% of consumers now prefer to shop in stores with touchless options, while 66% are more willing to scan a poster or a screen to discover more product or service information. Brands need to adapt to this new landscape by adopting digital first solutions that allow the blurring of offline and online for a richer travel experience. From being able to scan an in-flight entertainment screen to choose your movie on Etihad, or using WeChat Shake on a Martel advertisement for a redeemable e-voucher in Singapore Duty Free, the new digital landscape is offering enhanced opportunities that allow brands to personalize engagement with their most valuable consumers across the entire travel journey. 
Now, a great example of this blending of offline and online um, that I wanted to highlight now is this short video, which is, highlights a campaign by Latcom for Targ. Latcom built a mobile and out of home domination campaign for Targ Hur across Benito Juarez International Airport in Mexico City. The campaign focused on raising brand awareness of the Targ boutique inside the airport, along with their Formula One association in the run up to Christmas with incredible and effective results. So with all this change and opportunity, it really is now time for the travel industry to build back better. The new technologies, behaviors, and attitudes that we've explored in a small way today are really allowing us to reshape the global travel experience of tomorrow. For both travel providers and advertisers alike, we see that a renewed emphasis on sustainability, audience-led solutions, and increased digitization will lead to success in the new tomorrow. So we're looking at three important buckets as we move, move through 2021. Traveling with purpose, consumers have become far more conscious of the impact of the way that they choose to travel. According to American Express's Global Travel Trends Report, 68% of consumers are trying to be more aware of sustainable brands to support. The need for brands to communicate the values that they stand for has never been more vital. Now, from messages of support, reinforcing government guidelines, gestures of solidarity, and more, brands have been doing it very successfully throughout 2020. And it's a trend that we believe is set to increase in importance in 2021 and beyond. Actually, I just saw a great example this morning on my LinkedIn of this from Nestle, who ran an out home campaign in the UK using 100% recycled materials. They get this area completely. So onto the second bucket, which we've catchily called a digitalized omnichannel experience. There's simply no escaping it. We live in an omnichannel world. Today's travelers don't discriminate between the physical or digital media that they experience. They're not making a binary choice to be online or offline. Neither do they want to move in a linear fashion from one to the other. The way we want to consume and consequently the way that we want to design media experiences today is in a seamless integrated fashion where there is a frictionless and frequent movement between on and offline and back and forth and around again. We have to empower consumers so that they can traverse the physical and digital dimensions across a multitude of channels as they move through the consideration and purchase funnel. And in doing so, we need to build for them a seamless customer experience that delivers personalized and memorable results. Now the opportunity for brands in that omnichannel future is immense. Every touch point on the journey can potentially become a gateway into the wider, more connected experience that's been designed explicitly for those consumers. And with the superior experience comes superior results, that, whether that be sales, trial, or other metrics. Now onto the final bucket, audience-led flexible buying. So with an increased understanding of audiences through more relevant and granular data and new digital technologies that allow us to activate on that data, the ability to run targeted media campaigns has never been greater. With digital screens inside airports, we've seen an acceleration 
towards what is known as guaranteed audience buys. A new way of accessing the medium, airports such as Hong Kong and Copenhagen have fully embraced this kind of programmatic out of home initiative and technology in order to provide the ability to plan, buy, and serve advertising against a given audience in a more flexible way. In a world where uncertainty will continue to exist for some time yet, we believe that this kind of approach will be fundamental to rebuilding confidence and investment back into the global travel media segment in 2021 and 22. So, I wanted to finish off with one campaign that I think truly highlights the power of location intelligence in driving smarter, flexible solutions. And that is one from United Airlines, whose hub in New York is at Newark. United wanted to combat the preconception that JFK and LaGuardia airports were the obvious choice for getting in and out of New York City. So our team in the US engineered and executed a hyper-local digital out home campaign for United Airlines that posted real time drive times to Newark, Liberty International Airport versus JFK or LaGuardia. Using consumer data and a synchronized traffic feed, high frequency messaging was delivered to more than 500 digital out home screens across New York, including link NYC kiosks, digital bus shelters, digital newsstands and digital taxi tops. Each digital out home screen pulled specific data pertinent to its exact location to present accurate drive times to Newark Airport based on current traffic levels. Of course, if at any point the travel time wasn't in favor of Newark, the creative at that location simply switched to a more general Fly United brand message. And I believe that this campaign is a uniquely brilliant example of the fusing of data and media to create a more meaningful and impactful experience for both brand and consumer. Thank you, Ben. And thank you all for tuning in today for a glimpse into the future of travel and advertising in the quietly rebounding Americas. Domestic US travel is facing a promising summer season, especially if you're in Florida or flying out of Dallas and Charlotte. Travel retailers may also need to rethink and restock the shelves in Mexico, Puerto Rico, and the rest of the Caribbean as US travelers drive the demand up. Lastly, what are brands doing to plant the seed of duty-free shopping before, during, and after the airport experience? Are you using any of the innovative ideas the team at PSI can offer? Data, shopping, and media buying can all be seamless if executed well. That's all from us today. You can reach out to me or Ben. Our contact details will appear on the next slide. Bye for now.